Hi, this is John. Some time ago while I was watching K40 videos in general on YouTube, I saw a mod that somebody had done to their X carriage. And he did not go into the details on it, but I liked it enough that I figured out what he had done. And that's what I'm going to describe to you today. Now again, I did not come up with this, so whoever did, Thank you. I love it because it works. As your carriage comes with your K40, this is a typical design. You're going to have a top plate. Top plate's probably got um, either your drag chain on it for your wiring and your air hose, uh, or it could just be a simple flat plate through here. Doesn't make much difference. You're going to have a top plate, and in that top plate is mounted your head. That top plate is actually mounted to the bottom plate with three brass, you can call them standoffs or risers, but there are three brass standoffs or risers underneath of here. On the bottom plate is also where the four wheels that carry that carriage are attached. While you have, we're in here working on this, I want you to make sure that these wheels are not loose enough that the head wobbles or the carriage wobbles when you grab it and wiggle it side to side type thing you should have no discernible movement between the carriage wheels and the x rail you want that to be free to move but you do not want it to have any wobble to it Alrighty, let's get started with this thing. On top of your top plate, you will find three screws. One, two, three screws, one in the back. Remove those three screws. Remove the top plate. Just gently grab it and wobble it and pull it off and set it aside because we're not going to be using it for a while. What you should see are three brass standoffs or risers. I don't know what you want to call them, but three of them sticking up out of the base plate. Once you have the top plate removed, I want you to take those three brass standoffs and unscrew them. They are screwed into the base plate and they are like a 3.5 millimeter thread on them, so do not uh, start jerking around on them. You don't want to break that thread at all. Once you have them out, you're going to end up with just three holes in there. Now, I ran into a problem on this. Let me show you what happened. Now, here's where it gets to be fun. If you have a source for the proper 3 mil metric bolt, 2 inches long, to fit in those holes, you are in like gold. Okay? Now, I went down to my fastener store. And what I picked up were these bolts. They're three mil. I picked up some nuts. But when I got home and realized they're not threaded all the way. In other words, this is all of the thread that that bolt had. And since you're going to take and insert this bolt from the bottom of the carriage up through, you need all of this threaded. So what I ended up having to do is go, since I'm in the United States, I ended up going to an American type screw. Now what I use is referred to as a 632. It's a number six bolt. 32 gives an indication of the number of threads and it was a two inch bolt. Now up here I've got it written down that basically you got the three mil and you're replacing that with a four mil, which means you've got to open up the holes just a hair in that bottom plate. On the bottom plate, what I did is I took and I drilled the holes very carefully. Then I threaded them or tapped them rather with a 632 tap. Now, in the United States, if you don't happen to have a drill and a tap, you can go to the big box store and pick up a set of a drill and a tap for about eight bucks and it's worth it what you need to do then is take your bolts whether you're using a three mil and you got a full thread or whether you're going to go to a six 
632. This is just a, a shorty. A 632. Either way, you're going to screw those bolts in from the bottom of the plate. Now, let's come back over here and you can see what I've done. Right here, the bolt is threaded through the bottom plate and it has a nut that's been screwed down to pinch that bolt to the plate. When you get the bolt almost all the way screwed in, I want you to put a drop of red lock tight or thread locker on there. I don't care what brand you use as long as it's red because that indicates it's made or intended for a permanent installation. The blue is a temporary installation and you want this to stay as snug and as immovable as you possibly can. So put a drop of red on there, screw the bolt the rest of the way in, run the nut down and tighten it to the plate so that what you created is a very solid installation of the bolt. Once you have those bolts installed, and I apologize for jumping around here because I'm trying to do this video and include still photos and I've never done this before. Once you have those bolts in place, what you're going to do is you're going to put a washer. And what I'm using is a number 10 washer. Okay. It's pretty small. But you put a washer and, I'm sorry, you put a nut and a washer on the bolt on each of the three bolts. So you got one, two, and one in the back. You put a nut with a washer. Then you take your top plate and put it back on. On top of the top plate, then you create another washer nut combination so that you can tighten the top nut and the bottom nut together and create a very tight immovable joint. The biggest advantage to this is that you can back these nuts loose you can reach underneath of here and either loosen or tighten the nut from the bottom, which will allow you to either raise or to lower the top plate on any of the three bolts, totally independent. You can twist it, you can tip it, you can raise the whole thing up however in the world you want to do it. But what it does is it makes it totally adjustable your top plate. When you include this with your alignment process, you will get a much better alignment total within that package. Thanks for watching the video on head align or head uh, adjustment screws. What I'm going to show you now may answer a couple of questions that have been um, posted on uh, Facebook in the forums. Some people are showing that when their their uh, laser beam is actually hitting the material, they're either getting uh, two burns or they're getting a main burn with a ghost. And what I'm thinking is that part of the problem that they are seeing is the fact that the head is not vertical. In other words, when you... Uh, when without doing anything special, it is possible that the head from the factory is sitting off on a slant, forward or back, could be tipped front or back. But what happens is that when the laser beam hits mirror three, it simply shoots down in relation to the angle that the head is sitting at, not necessarily the angle that the work is sitting at. So if the head is sitting, for instance, with a tilt, let's say about like that, you're going to end up with a work that has an edge with a uh, slant on it instead of a straight cut. And it could be on one edge, it could be on two edges, but at any rate, what I think is causing it is that the fact that the head itself is not in vertical alignment to the work. Now what I have done here, and I'm going to show you, I have the American Photonics alignment laser. What they've done is they have machined this billet section here. 
It's threaded to screw on to the bottom of the standard K40 head, and you can see that there's a hole in the middle of it. What they did is on the other end, they took a laser. There are three button batteries that go in here, unless you uh, come over the bypass, which I did and I posted about. But at any rate, this, when it's on, shoots a beam straight up into mirror three. From mirror three, then it shoots it over to mirror two, mirror two into number one. And I'm telling you right now that it cuts down on your alignment time dramatically. But let me then unscrew my base here. This is my focus lens. What I'm going to do, well, hello. Yeah. What I'm going to do is screw on the alignment unit here. See if I can get it one-handed, not being a, a true lefty. Let's see what happens if I try it this way. Come on. Why is it that when you're trying to do something like this, it always takes longer? Okay. Now, the way that this is set up is that when that beam is coming in, it's going to fire straight up. It's not going to fire on an angle or anything like that. The angle is going to be whatever the head is, period. Now, what I've done is I've taken a machinist's square. I do not have a short one that will fit underneath of this without removing my uh, Z-plate. And I'm not going to mess with that. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of wood and just simply taped it to the side. Now, this is what I want you to pay attention to. When I slide this up to that billet, this space is parallel. Okay? It is as close to vertical along here as I can get. By swinging this around to other points and etc., I can verify to as much as I can physically, okay, eyeball, that the head is vertical. Now, the advantage to the head adjustment system or model that I just posted the video on, and you're watching the follow on to, is the fact that now the plate is totally adjustable. You can loosen these three bolts, two in the front, one in the back, loosen those up, loosen the nuts underneath of here, or at least they'll be only finger tight at that point. You can then make micro, virtually infinitely adjustable movements to bring this head into vertical. Now, along with that change, obviously fire it up and check and make sure that your alignment is still in good shape. But this is the only way that I can think of to make sure that your head is actually shooting as vertical as possible. In other words, plumb as possible. And again, like I said, what I'm doing is in, to extend that, I'm using the American Photonics. If you've already put in a long lens, you should have uh, some type of a longer tube that you can sight with. And that gives you uh, the same versatility, okay? At any rate, hopefully you got something good out of this short extra video. If you did, hit the like button down there. If you have questions, drop me a comment. And other than that, have a great one. Bye.